The key message that I was talking about came at the confluence of three different stories. So uh, the first story is uh, the fact that uh, we have a world of ever-increasing connectivity. We, every year we get tens of millions of more internet users coming on stream. Uh, the second story is one of, uh, it's the fact that a lot of these people coming on stream onto the internet are people that need jobs, need work. And the third story is one whereby now all of a sudden we have all of these work marketplaces that allow people to relatively easily buy and sell labor. So what we've been doing is studying some of these work practices uh, online on the internet. We've, we've spoken to workers in three countries in Southeast Asia, three countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, and we've been asking them about their lives and the work that they do. What we found is that this work has been quite beneficial for a lot of people. So it, it gives them jobs, it gives them income, um, it's, a, it's a step up in some of their careers. But what we've also found, found are some significant concerns and worries. Uh, one worry is that as we bring all of these people together in a, effectively a global labor pool, uh, we're seeing worries that, we, that there could be a race to the bottom. So if you get people from Bangladesh, from India, from the Philippines, from Kenya, and from rich uh, Western countries all competing in the same market, uh, we're seeing uh, workers trying to outbid each other in terms of uh, wages, for instance. Uh, so that, that's really a significant concern that we have. The second part of uh, the, the message that came here was, was, well, what can we do about it and what should we do about it? And there were four ideas uh, in the talk. Uh, the first one is we can think about market-based strategies uh, as a solution. So think about something like what the Fair Trade Foundation has done for physical commodities, for coffee uh, or for chocolate. Couldn't we think about something like a Fair Work Foundation that, that certifies that value chains of work um, uh, don't have any really distasteful practices in them? A second strategy could be to think about labor rights strategies. So what, if the global market for work is global, if we get workers from all around the comp world competing against one another, don't we also need a global response? So do, how can we address this with, with uh, collectives of workers or unions that end at national borders. So we, we need to think a bit more globally about this. Uh, the, the third thing is regulatory strategies. So in our research what we found is that um, the, the uh, workers come from all over the world, but the clients of those workers, so the people who are buying that work, come only from a few countries. The reason why this is important is because it's in those very few countries, in that handful of countries where the clients of this work are, that's where we can think about regulation. That's why we can think about making sure that a client in the UK or Germany uh, isn't getting away with paying less than minimum wage, uh, w which can sometimes happen. And then finally, we can think about who owns the very digital means of production. Uh, so to look uh, at some of the platform cooperatives that are being built and put out there, uh, where, where uh, essentially the, the gains of this work are more fairly uh, distributed amongst the workers. Mm -hmm.